Roger, main B, bus on a bolt. Roger, main B, under bolt. Okay, stand by 13, we're looking at it. You got a fetish for my love. Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Talk Show Time. We are being pre-recorded. Uh, reason being, I do not have proper internet right now. Until I can get that back, uh, we are doing pre-recorded videos to upload to YouTube and to Rumble. So guys, today we are going to check out Valuetainment. Uh, they put out a video about, I say, yeah, six days ago from this uh, posting six, seven days ago. So we're going to check this out. It's called Marriage is Outdated. According to 40% of young adults surveyed. Now let's check out what they got to say here. Uh, right now, uh, I got to totally agree with them, at least for the Western world, because the marriage and divorce laws here are out of control. Uh, divorce laws, uh, child support laws, uh, I am going through so much myself, so I can personally say yes, that's exactly a lot of this is going to be true in my case. So guys, let's check this out. Uh, let's bring up the screen. Alright guys, and let's get this full screen so we can have a uh, good view. Guys, please follow Valuetainment. They put out a lot of good videos, uh, just in general. Not just for men, uh, for women, for people in general. Uh, they are putting on a lot of valuable information. So check them out. Make sure you subscribe to them to YouTube. Let's see what they got to say in this video. Marriage outdated. Marriage outdated. Adam, be ready. Two in five young adults now think... That, that picture is, is kind of selling the idea. Yeah, exactly. With Uma. <laughs> two in five young adults think the tradition no longer matters. A survey reveals that two in five young adults consider marriage an outdated tradition with, a, with 85% believing that a fulfilling and committed relationship doesn't require marriage. The sentiment is more prominent among women, 52%. Wow, 41% men. The survey re reflects a broader trend as one in four 40 year olds in the US have never married. And 34% of people 15 and older have never been married. 15 and older, 15 and old never been married. Okay. The rising cost of weddings is a major deterrent. Wait, wait, and 73% of millennials and Gen Zers considering it too expensive. Young adults feel judged for not being married, especially by their mothers. 69% of women, 27% of men. Fear of divorce is also a significant factor, with 47% expressing concerns, and many couples lack plans for shared responsibilities Absolutely. like pets and children in case of a break. Yeah, uh, me, myself, I've, I've been divorced twice. Uh, I'm going through a lot on child support right now, uh, which is one of the reasons why I've been struggling for so many years. 
Uh, the New York state laws for child support are absolutely ridiculous. One of the few states versus the rest of the country where they require people to pay child support until the age of 21. Meanwhile, uh, it's 18 years old in the large majority of the United States and other countries as well that do have child support. Um, these laws are made to destroy not only men, uh, but to destroy the nuclear family, to destroy the kind of unity that a, a family would have, and also to break down the men, because you may call it a conspiracy theory, but having a nuclear family, having a strong male person in charge of the house, in charge of that household, um, that honestly does bring more unity and more strength to the family. The kids don't grow up as fucked up, uh, but with the advent of social media, it's a lot harder to prevent that. Uh, honestly, I think social media has been put out there to basically destroy the next coming generations, to weaken our country, not only our country, but so many people in general and so many other countries just so they can be controlled. I mean, honestly, uh, how do you control people? By breaking down their mental, their emotional, breaking down the family unit, making women think, oh yeah, I don't need a man, I don't need, I, I, to go out, do, get, your, get your money, make your money, you don't need a man for anything. But when you do need a man for something, who do you come calling? Absolutely. Let's continue to see what else they got to say. So, Adam, why do you, what do you think about this article here? Well, like, is marriage worth it? Is it not worth it? What are your thoughts on this? I mean, let me just say this. I think that uh, at the end of the day, men and women are better together. I think uh, we're here with PHP. I think uh, you guys, how many, how many of you guys are married couples working together? There you go. There you like, go. Literally everyone, exactly. and I'm not pandering to the audience. I genuinely believe that. Respect. But 90% of hands we just went up. Yes. Yeah, well, I don't know what that was. Um, but you might have saw that I uh, was trending on uh, social media. Me and my ex. Hold on. 90% uh, of them, they say that they're married couples trying to make things work. That's the thing. There you go. If if you have a strong family. Uh, traditional family you don't see that much anymore and when you do a lot of times they end up failing divorce 50% of marriages in the states end a divorce when I posted the owl in uh, Asia video 60% of marriages end in divorce in Canada uh, obviously something is not right obviously is something is going wrong but yeah, let's continue. Let's see what else you got to say. His girlfriend Chelsea Handler had yep. a bad breakup. Uh, yeah, heartbreaking. You know, I remember heartbreaking, you were emotional about you know, it. I'm she into had, that used up uh, 50 year old lady vibe. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I think there's two things going on here. I think number one, women um, have been fed a um, bowl of lies there from modern day feminism, uh, telling them that they don't need a man, go out, work, like make your money. Why need a man in your life? Just do it by yourself. Uh -huh. And th I think that's just an absolute shame because I think that women, the number one role of a woman, whether it's... Here we go. Here it is. I think, and I ask married women uh -oh. all the time. Get the shoes ready, lady. Here we go. Ladies. I don't care how much money you make, what you do for business, the best thing you've ever done is have children and raise great children, okay? That's I'm looking right. at many women right here. Absolutely. As amazing as Sheena is and as... Amazing as Marlene is, whoever's out there, your kids are the best. Are they not? Okay, you would trade everything you you're doing how here. quiet they were? Well, they, yes. uh, just recently, you know, it's, it's been summer, kids yeah. been home. So I guess my kids are not good. They're yeah. not going to school right now. No, I know. Parents I, feel it, you know, if you got the kids at the house. And I know, Matt, with uh, your uh, dozen uh, kids, uh, you know what I'm saying <laughs> about this, brother. And then I think that um, women, when they enter this modern day mindset of feminism, Men, when they make money, they look for dependence. Yo, I'm a man, I made my money, let me go find my girl, I'm gonna have a family, 
I'm gonna do my thing. A lot of women are like, I'm independent. I don't need my man. So it's sort of counterintuitive. Men yep. are very fearful these days. Why? Because of the court systems. 98% of you. alimony are men paying women. Mm -hmm. So 98%, not 90, like, these are very high numbers. So I do a show called Saucecast where finance meets romance, and I have these difficult conversations about prenups. Nice little plug there, you like that, Pat? Um, and, and like you just saw um, the soccer player who hid his assets his mom's. in his, his mom's, mom's name. name, and the woman divorced <laughs> yes. him. Yes. And basically what happened that was, was the best. she came after his assets. He's like, I ain't got no money, baby. Go. Like, I got nothing. The mom had it all. And ironically enough, she, she's a hot model. She makes a million bucks a year. Now she's paying him at alimony, allegedly. That's beautiful. There you go. So I That's think, beautiful. Yeah. That is fucking amazing. If you didn't hear about that story. Yeah, this guy, uh, his wife divorced him, went after supposedly everything he had. The guy has nothing in his name. Everything. Even his clothes. In his mother's name. The smartest guy in the world. Uh, but let's continue. Come on, guys. We only win 2% of yeah, the time. Exactly. You have to celebrate. Is that what like the leader's bullet says? That's and no bullet joke. Says Erica Juarez. So that's why that's beautiful. Because if we ever get divorced, Erica's going to be paying me since I don't have anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? My well, plaques say Eric yeah. Juarez. Well, he just yeah. got out of jail. Everything's in his mom's name. We yeah. know how that thing works. <laughs> I'm good. So, I, think, I think what society is lacking <laughs> is genuine examples of what great relationships and marriages and families look like. That's why I love PBD and his family, because what an amazing situation. The only other person that I would constantly look at and be like, wow, that's the man, is Tom Brady. Super Bowl winning quarterback, GQ, stud, millionaire, this, that, the other, model, wife, Giselle, hot, this, family, kids, and it's like, she leaves Tom Brady. And I say this all the time, it's like, Giselle, I know you're hot and all, but good luck finding another Tom Brady. There you right? go. Yep. So I think society, what's the Wall Street Journal article about crumbling values in America today? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Religion, family values, exactly. community service, marriage. Like, I think we're trending the wrong way, and I think that it's incumbent on men and women to understand what's happening in society today, and not just be like, oh, Adam, you're an asshole, you're a chauvinist. No, I want to get married, I want to have a family, I want to have kids, but I also want to be aware of the pitfalls of what's going on today. Yeah. Misogyny, misogyny. You're such a misogynist. That, that this is exactly what they're, uh, uh, these women are being taught, that this is all misogynist, the patriarchy. Um, men are in control of any, everything. Uh, sweethearts, uh, men built the world. We built the buildings. We built most of the cars. I know there's women out there in, in the car factories now. I understand that. Uh, there's a lot of factory work that women are getting in there. But a large majority is all men. Construction, I say, I would say 99.99% of the jobs are out there are men. Oh, but there's a wage gap. Uh, hold, hold, hold on. Before anybody says anything about the wage gap, which is bullshit, I'm going to tell you why. First of all, you're talking about a very small majority of men who make the kind of money that uh, women are talking about. Uh, for the most part, in the middle um, areas of employment, men and women most, mostly make the same around the same amount. Okay. They talk about, oh, but men have more jobs. And this. Yes, we do. Because there's no way in hell a woman is going to go out and do construction, especially in New York. You go out to any construction site in New York. Do you see any women out there? I, for one, have never seen one. And I'm not trying to be chauvinist. I'm not trying to be misogynist. I am stating plain facts, guys. Plain facts and witness. I've never seen a woman out in a New York City construction site. Never. If you were offered $100,000 on a construction job, being a woman, I guarantee you they would not take it. Guarantee you. Very, very tiny percentage. If they can handle it, they were like bigger than me, bigger than the average man. Yeah, there are women like, out, like that out there. Honestly, there are. Uh, I'm not saying they're not. And there are women out there who will uh, 
be uh, more of a man than me and myself put, put me and my brother put t- together. You know, it's it's honestly that there are women like that, and that's okay. That's 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 how some women are. But this, it's very rare that they'll go out and do those kind of jobs, if any. So before anybody says anything about a wage gap or how men make more money, well, you want equality? Go get a construction go- uh, a construction job. Go out on the oil rigs. See what happens there. Yeah. Well, it's like the, reading this article. I mean, it's just it's very to me. It's very sad. Um, number one, because it's just like you said. It's it's a, a clear sign of like societal decay that we would even be in this situation. Look, the objective reality is that marriage is the best situation for children. And that yes. should be our priority. What's best for the children? And there's something so perverse about our current culture where there's so much focus on kind of like the like you, the individual. This is one of the things that drives me crazy about always celebrating people who come out as, as trans. And they're like, oh, this is wonderful. You're being who you are. You know, you were always a woman and you have to live as you feel. And like, no one ever seems to go like, hey, what about the kids? And what about yeah, this, penis? Is this not exactly. Well, yeah, that's, well, you don't, turns out you don't have to do anything no. to that now. Um, but it's just like, there doesn't seem to be concern about Yeah, a uh, little plug in there. The, the, the reason why he says you don't have to do anything with that today, because if you go look at the public school system, especially in New York, all over the country, they are pushing the the agenda, the rainbow agenda, I'll call it. Um, and you have no control of that because you have no control over what the public school does to indoctrinate your children. And it's very unfortunate. About this. And that's, that, by the way, that's how society continues is through children. And just to your point, Adam, I mean, look, I would say, I don't think it's just like a thing for women. I mean, I... Like, I love my career. I really love it. I have my dream job. I love doing stand-up comedy. I love doing cool shows like this. I love it. I make a very good living, you know, not compared to some people, but <laughs> compared, to the, <laughs> compared to the general population, I do very well. And I have a, a career that I'm passionate about that I love. That's pretty rare. It's a small percentage of, of society who has that. And still, if you were to ask me, what's the most meaningful or important thing in my life? It's not like career is number two. It's such a distant number two. Like, the older you get, the more you realize all that really matters is family. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. And I think Absolutely. it's very easy, particularly Absolutely. for women, just because they do have more of a biological clock. Just that's the reality than men. It's very, diff- it's very easy when you're 25 to be like, I don't really care about any of that. I'm having fun. I'm doing my thing. And then it's very easy to do that up until you're 35. And by the time you're 35, you're up against it. You are immediately, you're in a high-risk pregnancy if you get pregnant at 35. Geriatric no what pres- it is. Pres- yes. Geriatric pres- pregnancy, you're, you're, yes. You're increased the risks of something going wrong. On top of that, if you're 35 and single and you want to have kids, you better fi- find the guy, like, immediately. Ladies, I'm single out there. If you're out there, where, where we at? <laughs> and, okay, let me stop right there. If anybody doesn't know, there's something called the wall. You know? Once you hit 35, uh, yeah, we have been taught to go back on what they were talking uh, about before. We have been taught, or actually, ladies have been taught. We don't need a man. Let's go, go out, go through your whole phase. You'll see that on TikTok. Go out, have fun, get your career, go to college. Listen, there's nothing wrong with going to college. There's nothing wrong with going to get a career. Um, but having a family and having kids needs to come first. Job and career, secondary, honestly. And I'm going to go by what Bo from uh, Legion of Men, he always says, for men, work hard in your 20s, play in your 30s, build yourself up, okay? Build yourself up, be financially independent, go see, the, go see the world once you have your shit in order. Because the first 10 years of those 20s, honestly, there's no fucking way you're going to make 500 grand a year. There's no way like these chicks uh, are demanding, okay? 
There is no fucking way. It's, it's delusional thinking. Work hard in your 20s. Play in your 30s. Or get your life together. Find, that's when you start finding a wife between 30, 35. And the ideal thing for that kind of man to, do, to look for is somebody younger in their early 20s. Someone who's more fertile. Let's talk scientific here. Someone who's more fertile. Okay. Someone who's younger, more beautiful than some 35 year old, 40 year old, 50 years old, 50 years old. These hags going on TikTok. Oh, I don't need a man. I don't need you. Well, buy a cat and die alone. You look horrible. Nobody, no man's going to want you. It's going to be very hard for a 35-year-old woman. And if you're a single mother, mm-mm. honestly, those guys who hook up with the single moms, uh, I always say, do not do it, at least here in the West. In the Philippines, it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, it depends on the on the woman. She could still be great. Uh, but in all honestly, if you decide to marry somebody who has a kid already, even out in the Philippines, uh, there are there are risks. Like uh, if you try to discipline a kid, uh, there could be definite problems because it's not your kid. Uh, that kid is going to be number one in her life. You're going to be number two. It's understandable. Um, and, I, and, and I understand that. That's, that's, that's an understanding that you have to realize if you deal with someone who's a single mom. Here in the States, don't even consider it. If you end up marrying that person, if they have one, two, three kids, you become a stepdad, you end up putting yourself in a situation even worse because if you try to discipline those kids, she ain't having it, that's going to be a problem. That's going to undermine your position as the man of the house. Number two, if there's a divorce and that person has those, those kids, the, the mother, is, the single mother leaves, not only are you liable for child support for those kids because you married, alimony, and you lose out on those kids if and when you grow to love them and nurture them you're you're that's ripped away from you absolutely ripped away so that's even more emotional and mental trauma you have to go through and i do not recommend it ever here in the states in the philippines there's no divorce um that's a good thing and a bad thing in the philippines they believe strongly in the family unit uh, this is why I encourage men to go out in the world, get their passports, travel around, see how the rest of the world is. Do not just go by what you see here in the States. Do not just sit there and see what you see in social media. Trust me, guys. I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart. And I tell you, women, I am not saying all this to put any of you down. This is an honest to God fact. Okay. But some of you women might be saying, oh, but what if he was an asshole? What if he was a cheater? Um, you know, there are those situations, obviously, if there, you know, if there was domestic abuse. Yeah, I totally get that. That That's a whole different story. But even in that situation, it's going to be harder for you as a woman because you're going to be carrying that trauma for the rest of your life. Uh, that's going to be a hard thing to deal with. And I'm not saying that as a, 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 a knockdown or anything like that. It's, it's, a, it's a fact. It's a reality. Uh, yeah. So it, each situation, yeah, it's going to be different. But for the most part, don't even deal with single moms. Forget about it. Guys, don't even do it. Get your passports. Go to the Southeast Asia. Go to the South America. A lot of guys are going to South America. I don't know about South America personally. It's not my thing. Uh, that's more, I think, for just guys just want to date outside the country. Uh, 
they could do that in the Philippines and Southeast Asia as well. But honestly, uh, Philippines, Southeast Asia, they're definitely more family oriented. Uh, a lot of places in South America too, but um, I believe South America is a lot more influenced by social media and by uh, modern day feminism. And there's, so I think there's kind of this, um, I remember, I remember being young, like being really young and feeling like 40 was really old. You remember like that feeling of like what 40 felt like when you were 20, 20, 20, 20 and you were like, I've been 40 for three years now, Dave. So yeah, I get so, it. So, well, you're really experiencing it. Uh, but like, you remember that and then, and it almost feels like, like that 30 that's old, like the end, by the way, like 40 is the end, you know, but it's not, it's the halfway point. And so, like, it might feel great at 25 to be like, oh, I don't need a family, I don't need kids. Like, okay, but how are you going to feel at 55, 60, 65, 70, Listen, 75, ladies. when other people have their kids and their families Listen. around them, and you have, like, nothing? And, you know, the, the tragic thing about it is that there's no going back at that point. Like, you've kind of got to figure this out now. Mm -hmm. And so it's awful that we don't, like, how do, we, how do we not as a culture like promote to young people mm -hmm. that the best thing you can do is get married and have a family? I'll say that. 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 i will I'm going through all this stuff. And some of the worst dark moments in a man's life is knowing that your children just got ripped away from your house, that you have to be told by the courts when to see your kids, that the courts say you pick your kids up in the Walmart here, the parking lot, you meet here, and like, you have supervised visits, Absolutely. all this bullshit. Yeah. There you go. And when you see the, uh, your child support money going, and it's not going to the child, so oh, then yeah. we look at it that way. And that's Absolutely. the way I looked at it. So for me, I did a deep cut him off I'm sorry but and then they give you this excuse oh I'm saving the money so don't say I'm not using it for them you're not using them you're not using it for them you're not stop the bullshit stop it stop the cow fucking unreal deep dive into my faith when I looked at uh, that Wall Street Journal that this is when I uh, started going to Calvary Church and uh, and uh, it was at uh, in Orange County, Calvary Church. Uh, what's that mall there? Um, in South Coast Plaza, right there at Calvary Church. Yeah, Raw, uh, Raw Reese and uh, Greg Laurie. He was out there. They had Bible studies on Mondays, and they're talking to me about the design of marriage. I'm like, well, I've never heard of this stuff before. And so I wasn't around the example of husband and wife together raising, uh, being raised by a kid. Now, granted, my father was around. He was there. But typical Filipino dad never said anything until he did something wrong. Right? And then I learned how to just not talk to my father because I didn't want to be um, told I was doing it wrong, but look at that. He's Filipino. He's Filipino. He just said a typical Filipino dad. So that man right there is a Filipino. So he got married early. Same as me. I got married early too. I got married the first time at 23. It was a big mistake. I wouldn't go back and change it because I had my daughter. Uh, so you can't change that. Uh, even if I wanted to, I wouldn't change that. Despite the fact that we don't talk anymore. Uh, I still do love my daughter. Uh, but that goes back to say, when you're a man, you work hard in your 20s, and then you play in your 30s, or you start your family in your 30s. And as far as the girls, when they're in their early 20s, no more than 25, that's when they really need to be starting their family. And they should be looking for those guys who are well established, who worked hard in their 20s and now are in their 30s looking for that man to establish a family, to have kids with, okay? And I guarantee you that would be a much better, successful family unit. See, if I would have known back in the day the things that I know now, my life, yeah, would have been different. But I don't sit here and bitch and moan about it because, honestly, there's no point in doing that. I made the mistakes that I made. Uh, I wasn't a good husband. I'll, I, I completely admit it. Why? Because I was young and stupid. So, I got married twice. 
in my 20s. So I was young and stupid. I should have never done that. Like I said, if, but I wouldn't change it, those mistakes, because of my kids. Because I do love my kids. And I pay out of my ass, back through my nose, through my left nut, and out my penis uh, in more ways than one. The amount of child support is ridiculous. It's, like I said, it's one of the reasons why I am in uh, the positions that I'm in. Uh, let's continue. If you're looking at um, my 14 years after I got divorced, I said, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do my thing. I focused on my business 14 years. There you go. She's going to come. She's going to come. Now, as a man, I felt I could wait, build my business. I could wait, evolve because I felt more confident as a husband. If I was a provider and a protector, if I wasn't providing, if I wasn't protecting them, I wouldn't feel good as a man. And then baby, remember we got, uh, we decided to get married. So let's just go into our pastor's office and just do the swearing in there. Our mothers found out. They go, oh no, you're not going to do that. Next thing you know, family comes in. We spent, how much was our budget for our wedding? A thousand bucks. How what? much is your wedding dress? A hundred bucks for a wedding dress. Our Save wedding that money. She accepted our wedding. it. And look at that. She accepted it. That right there tells you what kind of woman that is. She accepted that. She was happy with it. Uh, even though it sounds like the family was against it. That's, that's a jewel right there. Save that money, baby. Our wedding downstairs, everything was, everybody was pumped up, excited. I mean, it was, to me, I was biased to it, but we just felt that was an awesome wedding. That is so cool. Would you mind talking to my wife? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Just maybe you guys hang out it, a little it, bit together. And honestly, guys, if you do get married, get married, uh, if you find someone like that, I am all for the small wedding. I am all for the non-traditional kind of wedding to do something outside in a park or someplace else not to do in a church because there's just so many expenses involved thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to have this big dream web wedding and it, that's not what it's about it's about a new beginning it's a, about spending the rest of your life with the man and woman or woman that that you want to be with and that right there um there's no beating that the best thing she said, babe, you know what? I don't, I don't care about uh, 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 spending money on her wedding. I'd rather invest in her marriage. Oh, my God. That's a wife <laughs> right go. there, yo. That's she a wife. Go. Trina, you wife got any younger her. sisters? You got any, like, right? But, hey, hey, Pat, she has a brother. I think I think she has a brother. All right, I'll take what I can get. Amen. <laughs> um, you have a brother? Throw have a, brother. a wig on that thing and it trans these days. I don't, I don't care. I'm getting a prenup, though, Sheena. But you said something very interesting. Oh, yeah. Always get a prenup, guys. Always get a prenup. I don't know how it works in the Philippines. I have to uh, really look at that. Um, but uh, I feel confident in my own uh, situation with my fiance. But even so, I, uh, you always got to get a prenup. I don't know how it works in the Philippines. Uh, but, yeah, you got to look. I got to look. Dave, that you said um, the, the best environment to raise children is with a dual family dual parent household right pbd Absolutely. you did an entire episode about this that the second best is actually with a single father that the stats are actually quite comparable yes to a, a dual parent household to the that of just a man raising a, ch a child and then it just plummets if it's a single mom. What yeah. was that? What was that? that yeah, study? that's what it was. Like, like yeah. the, the power of having a father figure in your life, uh, uh, it's a difference. Like, if there's I'm no at the house, there's no more authority, Pat. There's yep. no, there's no accountability yeah. when you're just raised with your mom. It's funny. Me and my wife were just having this conversation yesterday. Yeah, because you know what? We're just talking about it, Pat. There's no accountability. Hold on. You know what? Because I saw this myself with my ex-wife. The woman will be a pushover. She'll let the, ke the, the, the kids get away with whatever the fuck they want. You know, and there's no real discipline. She can yell, she can scream, she can break things, whatever. But when it comes down to it, the kid doesn't really care. I mean, oh, you're going to break my stuff. Uh, I didn't pay for it. I don't care. You'll just buy me a new one. Ability. Because there's nobody keeping you in check. The mother just wants to nurture all oh, you. Okay, what happened to you? You got screamed. Yep. Let me help you. 
the dad's like, nah, you gotta quit that bullshit real fast. You gotta get the best. I can't see it. Angie, your mom having an oh, easy yeah. time raising you and all of <laughs> You guys look like you guys are two <laughs> sweet Alejandro, little boys. You, you listen, you didn't break the rules. No. Oh, mom, I'm in stuff. jail again. I, can you come, come, can you come get me? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. No, <laughs> hijo, no, not this time. <laughs> yeah, no. It's yeah, that's exactly what they're saying. Um, like the the way, especially for sons, uh, for them to be away from their fathers, uh, and I feel this myself, it hurts a lot for me. I know it hurt a lot for my sons when they were younger, and it turns them bitter. It really does. I experienced it myself with my father. Uh, when my parents got divorced, my father moved to Italy to try to find work. Uh, because he had to. But, yeah, that was some of the hardest times of my life. When I was a kid and my father left, I was with my mom. Uh, she was tried, She tried to be tough. She really did. But um, I had a lot of mental issues because of it. And a lot of kids that have these issues, mental, emotional, I guarantee you a lot of them are single family households. Uh, even if they get married, remarried, rather, that person who's replacing the father doesn't really replace the father because the mother is not going to let them have that kind of authority over the child. As I said before, s single mothers do not go with a single mother or someone who's already been divorced. It's, it's You have no accountability. You have nobody to answer to. And the natural order... I think a lot of people don't realize that the natural order of life is, you know, as God, we, we, we answered the man. A man doesn't, that, that doesn't answer or is not accountable to God has nothing to live for because he has nothing to base his life on. So there the natural go. order is God, the, man, the head of the household, and the wife, and then the kids. And when you yep. disrupt that natural order of life, you're done. There's no way you're going to have a healthy life if you continue to live that way. So to me, it's like, yeah, of course it makes sense that single fathers are raising better kids than single mothers. Mm -hmm. Not because moms suck at it, it's because the dad needs to be there to have an accountability over that child. Mm -hmm. The fact that I got in trouble exactly. so much was because my dad was not there. My dad's not a deadbeat, he was around, but my dad, I, I just felt like I'd get away with, with more because dad was not there to, to, uh, to tell me, hey, you can or you can't do this or whoop my ass like he did when I was around them all the time. It kept me in check. So yeah, it, it makes total sense. You know? I, I, I would also just add this because I agree with everything you guys have been saying. And I think it's very true that one of the things that uh, disincentivizes men uh, from wanting to get married is kind of these artificial legal yep. uh, liabilities. Yep. That are, Matt, that you are, dealt with this. Exactly. Exactly. So there's no question. And I had cousins and kids. Um, but there's also, there's there's other aspects to it as well. And I, like, I would, because I'm obsessed with politics, so this is what I focus on. But there's also aspects where are, are direct government not. policies have disincentivized families. And not just the fact that for years, like say the rise of the welfare yep. state, for years they were straight up cutting you a check straight if up, you yeah. had kids yes. without a dad in the household. LBJ, like, right basic, and, and this is just like, you know, yeah. And, and this is just basic economics 101, that if you incentivize a behavior, you will get more of it than you otherwise would have that's just the way uh, that's the way things Absolutely. work. Absolutely. On top of that, the policies of um sucking kids into this college trap yep. and and artificially oh. bidding up the prices of if college. My daughter's yeah, watching which is listen all to this. Loans backed by the government, guaranteed by the government. You know, if you if some 18-year-old kid here who has no some some 18-year-old who has no income and no assets and no work history walked in and said, "I want a loan for $200,000 to start a business." you will get laughed out of the bank. It would be like, there is no chance that Absolutely. you could find a bank Great. to give you that loan. But if you go in there and say, I want it for college, boom, rubber boom, stamps, you here go. you go. No problem <laughs> sending you into debt. It's the most vicious uh, type of debt. It's worse than credit card debt. They can garner your wages over it. You can't and file then, bankruptcy to get rid of it. Then at the same time, we've yep, had policies uh, such as artificially low interest rates, the, the Federal Reserve buying mortgage-backed securities on a regular basis that have bid up the price of housing. So you now you have these guys, you know, it's like these 25-year-olds who come out of college, they kind of did what all the adults around them were telling them is the right thing to do. They're 150 grand in debt. Listen. The average price of a home is like $800,000. And the kid works at Starbucks. And yep. he's like, well, there how the go. hell am I ever gonna get married and like provide for a wife and a family? And, and to be fair, this is part of the reason. Because you wasted your college years, your early 20s, going to college and getting a degree in liberal fucking arts. What the fuck are you gonna do with a liberal arts degree except wipe your ass in reality? 
reason why so many of those kids start demanding socialism. And I kind of, as much as that's not the direction we want it to is. go in, you kind of understand mm -hmm. where this, the corruption in the system has failed so much that they're like, well, this is impossible. Like, how could I ever get out of it? And they've also probably been on, you know, crazy psychiatric drugs. I also, for most I of also their think life. there's one other issue, uh, especially among younger people, and that's hookup culture. Yeah. And um, oh yeah, I quite frankly have been a good benefactor of some of this hookup <laughs> culture. But women which, now which view themselves. <laughs> <laughs> women now view themselves as yeah, if the guys can do it, I can do it. And I think we can all agree there's a big difference between a guy sleeping with a bunch of women versus a woman sleeping with a bunch of men. Yep. And that's, that, that is pervasive among, amongst women. And it's, it's sort of ruining women's um, asset, right, in the marketplace. And yep. it's- Asset value, that's right. Asset value, right. with that sexual, A double uh, S E T, value. all right. But it's, it, it, men and women are not equal in that regard. You caught me on that one? It makes sense why he's <laughs> single, yeah. by the way. Yeah, it totally that's makes sense. Right, guys. But I'm a man with options, is that's there a difference, y'all. So, yeah, he's absolutely right. Um, yeah, you go through your whole phase, your whole phase in your 20s. By the time you're 30, you're hitting the wall. Your, your face is all messed up because you put all, always putting up so much makeup. Um, your pussy's the side of, size of a fucking black hole. Uh, yeah, good luck trying to find a good guy. And then you ask, oh, where's the good guys? Where did all they go? I could tell you where they went. Hold on a second. I'm going to tell you right now. Let me see. Do I have that here? This is the way. So there they go. This is the way. All right, guys. Looks like uh, they're pretty much done with this video. Valuetainment. Give them a follow. Sub to their uh, YouTube. Look them up on Rumble if you can. Guys, a lot of great information. Ladies, a lot of great information for you too. It's not meant to put you down. It's not me meant to have you looked down upon despite what so many women will tell you. This this is reality, guys. If you look at how modern day society is going, the Sam Smiths, everybody waving that rainbow flag, making little children wave that flag. I honestly see it, and I see how the family unit's being broken down, uh, how men are being broken down because men are the ones who defend our country, defend our society against those who want to have control. And how do you destroy that? You take away the men's desire to fight back. You destroy them mentally, emotionally. You don't destroy them physically because they will fight back. You destroy them emotionally, mentally. You basically already won the war. It's just a matter of time. Are any signs you get of uh, the desire to one day get married? Yes or no? Any signs? Like, give me this much of a sign. Yes or no? So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here. All right, there you go. Valuetainment, guys. Check them out. All right, guys. So all I can say with that is thank you so much, guys, for watching tonight. I will be back again for another video pre-recorded until we can get our internet back up takes over an hour just to upload these videos because of the connection I have so actually doing a, an actual stream is almost impossible to get it out there so guys thank you so much for tuning in I will see you next time